Prior to the 20th century, the most widely accepted view of the atom was based upon John Dalton's model proposed in 1803, which stated that all atoms are fundamental, indivisible particles that make up all matter in the universe. There were different kinds of these atoms that interact with each other to form compounds according to this model, which explained the differing materials we see in our everyday lives. As simplistic and as rational of an idea as this seemed, there were some concerns arising that caused some questioning of this idea by the late 19th century, and by 1897, a key discovery made by one experimental physicist led to the ultimate collapse of this early model of the atom and ushered in a new era dominated by subatomic particles. J.J. Thompson first developed his passion for physics when he enrolled in Owens College in Manchester when he was only 14 years old. Owens was a rare university in that it provided experimental physics courses, which Thompson partook in. His mathematics professor recognized his brilliance during his time there and encouraged him to apply for a scholarship at Trinity College, which he ended up getting. Once at Trinity, he stayed there for the rest of his life, receiving his bachelor's degree in mathematics in 1880. From that point, he would spend his time providing lectures and conducting research on electromagnetism, following in the footsteps of James Clark Maxwell. In 1895, he turned his attention towards a hot topic at the time, cathode rays. Thompson's interest in cathode rays, much like other physicists at the time, was in settling a debate about these rays and their nature. On one hand, many scientists believed that the rays were a result of an ether, an invisible, weightless substance that exists in all of space, sort of like a universal field. On the other hand, many scientists believed that the rays consisted of electrified particles. Thompson's mission was to uncover the nature of these rays, determine their cause, and end this debate once and for all. To conduct experiments for these rays, Thompson set up a Crookes tube with the following components. A cathode and anode were placed at the starting end of the tube. Close to the other end of the tube were two oppositely charged electric plates at opposite ends of each other. A phosphor coating covered the far end of the tube so that it would light up upon the ray's contact with the glass. After testing different orientations with the electric plates, Thompson discovered that when the rays were fired, they would always bend towards the positively charged plate when it passed by it. Thompson repeated this test multiple times, using different metals for the cathodes and anodes, as well as using different gases inside the tube to rule out those variables as contributing factors to the ray's behavior. They did show no effect on the ray's tendency to bend towards the positively charged plate, so Thompson concluded that the rays must have consisted of negatively charged particles that he called corpuscles. While this was a significant discovery, Thompson didn't stop there, for his work was not complete. He continued to repeat his experiments, but replaced the electric plates with a a large electromagnet in such a way that the rays would pass between the two magnetic poles on their way through the tube. The rays bent with this setup as well, and after measuring the angles at which they bent from both electric plates and magnetic poles, Thompson was able to calculate the mass to charge ratio of these negatively charged particles. This ratio turned out to be extremely small, and through the math, he found that the size of these corpuscles were one two thousandth the size of a hydrogen atom. Thompson then shared his findings with the world, proposing corpuscles as incredibly small negatively charged subatomic particles that were found in all atoms. More experiments were done in later years to further confirm this proposition, specifically by Philip Leonard, whose experiments I covered in another video. Ironically, Leonard won the Nobel Prize a year before Thompson did, a highly controversial result, but nevertheless, Thompson did end up winning the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1906, in recognition of the great merits of his theoretical and experimental investigations on the conduction of electricity by gases. After the discovery of the electron, Thompson proposed his plum pudding model of the atom in which negatively charged particles would float through a hypothetical positively charged cloud. In his experiments, Thompson made a giant step towards successfully modeling the structure of the atom and also confirmed the existence of subatomic particles, opening an entire new field of study in what seemed to be at the time a dying branch of science. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see similar content about scientific progress in this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.